This limit is probably really frustrating for many of you students because when you look at this, you don't really know how to solve this. There's no simple simplification you can do. And in this problem, we're going to assume that A is a constant greater than zero. So in case you're wondering, what do I do? By the end of this video, I'm going to show you very clearly how to solve this easily. So for this problem here, sometimes you got to add to an equation to make it something you can solve, believe it or not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this by what's known as the conjugate. And let me explain what I'm doing here. We have something minus something here, right, on the left. We're going to call those A and B. So if you have something like A minus B, multiplying that by its conjugate would be multiplying it by A plus B, all divided by A plus B. And similarly, in the original expression, if we had a plus here instead, the conjugate would be A minus B divided by A minus B. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we have a square root sign here that's giving us a headache, right? If you can magically just square a square root, you can get rid of it. And the beauty of the conjugate here now is, if you remember from the FOIL method, when you have A minus B times A plus B, that's going to simplify to A squared minus B squared, where in this case, the A is going to be your radical term. So what this means is that for the numerator, we're going to be getting this on the top now, right? When we expand that through. And by inspection, you can already see that the x squared terms are going to cancel out, giving me this new limit. But now, hold on a second. We still have a problem, right? What do we do with this radical here on the denominator? If we just let x grow without bound, the answer isn't so simple. But here's where we can do another really cool trick. Imagine if this x here under the radical was an x squared. And that would be easy, right? Because when you take the square root of something squared, we know that gets simpler to work with. And not only that, but we have this plus x here on the right. So if we can pull an x out of the radical, and then we also have this plus x on the right, we know that we could just factor an x completely out of the denominator, which would allow us to cancel it with what you see here on the top. But you might be wondering, how do I factor out an x squared when I simply have an x under the radical. This is where we get creative because you can rewrite something however you want as long as you're not bending the rules. So let's think forward a bit and think about, okay, if I had a square root of x squared times something, what would that other something be? So this x plus a would need to be changed to make it work. Looking at this right here, x times x plus a, what is that? That's going to be x squared plus ax, right? So if we were to instead rewrite the x term here on the left as an x squared, we know multiplying everything above, the first part of the expression is going to give us an x squared. So this has to be a 1 right here. Now, instead of plus a, if we want to get xa and we factor it out an x squared, then we can just rewrite this as a over x. Try it for yourself, multiply it through, you'll get the same result. And this is super nice because now, if you remember with radicals, there's a property. The radical of a times b allows you to break up this into two different radicals, right? So I'm gonna split the radical here. And now you've got this x squared as its own separate radical, which is nice because when you simplify that, we know, and we got to be careful, right, dealing with the sine of x, but because it's a limit as x approaches infinity, we can already guarantee safely that x is not negative. So this allows us to bring the x out of the radical and check this out. Do you see how you've got an x here and over there with the plus x? We can factor x completely out of the denominator. And with this new expression, we can simplify this further by canceling out the x terms. So with this new limit expression now, do we need to manipulate it further or can we now actually solve this limit more clearly? Think about what a over x does when x approaches infinity. So if you don't remember, a itself is a constant, right? So the numerator is fixed, but because the denominator is growing without bound, when x gets super large, this fraction is really getting close to zero. So this means that the limit is going to simplify in such a way where that a over x term goes to zero when x grows without bound. And simplifying this expression will give us the following, and you can do this pretty easily. This is your final answer.